Welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa Caprio. Do you believe in magic? What if you were told that all you had to do was get a little creative and work a magic spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Here on Postcards to the Universe, we will share manifesting, tips, postcards, creativity, abundance, and prosperity. Here is your host, Melissa Caprio. Hello, and welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, creating the life you crave. How is everyone doing? I hope you guys are doing well. I have a great guest today, best-selling author, Karen Casey, who I will bring out in just a moment. Um, a couple of things for you guys who listen to me on a regular basis. My sister is home and doing well. She still has a trach, and hopefully that will be taken out soon, but every day she's getting stronger and stronger, and she can go back to her normal life. So thank you for all the prayers and the people who have reached out to me. Um, for those of you who do listen to me and follow me, uh, my Facebook account was uh, hacked last night in the middle of the night while I was asleep. And I can't get to any of my Facebook pages or my Facebook group. So the reason I'm sharing this is that if any of you get anything from me as of today, 818, do not open it. Do not click on any links. Please ignore it and report it. I have reported it and hopefully it will get, and I will get my Facebook account back. I hope so. I know I'm not the only one. This happens a lot. I just wish Facebook made their support links more user friendly and that you could actually connect with somebody, but I did report it. So fingers crossed it will be resolved soon. So um, I wanted to share that with you guys because I have a lot of people who find me on Facebook. So just so you know, okay, I, got, I did get hacked last night. <clears throat> um, those of you listening to me know that each week I share an affirmation that I'm focusing on for the week. And I like to tap into the energy of that affirmation and keep repeating it to myself to increase its power to become a new belief that I like to incorporate into my life. And this week's affirmation is I am open to love. And I share my magic money message each uh, Monday. It's an image of a manifesting postcard that I photograph with an affirmation that I like to focus on for the week. And I post them on Mondays. And this week's is I am open to love and showing others. So it's, it's, let me just say this. So usually I do share it on Facebook um, also. And it is there because I did share it on Monday. But you can still see my Magic Money postcards on my website or or Twitter, or Instagram. I'm still on Instagram, and LinkedIn, so and my website, so you can still see them. Okay, so I am open to love. So showing others the kind of love you want is wonderful in opening yourself up to more love, right? Showing others how much you love them shows the universe that we are tapping into the energy of love. But I believe showing yourself unconditional love is the best way to open yourself up to more love coming into your life. To treat yourself as you would someone else in your life who you love very much, it's important to take care of yourself as the special and precious person you are. Many, many times we put ourselves last on the list, and that is not taking loving action. You need to put yourself on your list first. Why aren't you top priority on your list of love? Once you make that a priority, you will start to see changes in your life, and you can start manifesting those changes. And I'm going to use the words today that my guest wrote, Karen Casey wrote, to help me with the situation that I have currently going on in my life. So this is one of the um, uh, meditations that she wrote. Everything that happens is for my good. This is a very bold statement. Can it be true? Many would say no. There was a time in my past when I would, I too would have disagreed with it. But the spiritual principles that have been guiding me for more than four decades have changed many of my old beliefs. Now I see from a new perspective. Now I see that there is and always has been a divine story unfolding in my life. A story that is perfect in every way. And it's a story that is carrying me to the exact places I need to be, experiencing just what I need to encounter and with the quote unquote teachers I need to learn from. The story will continue until my time is done. 
Because of hindsight, we can all see that something in our past that troubled us at the time has now seeded itself into the learning curve, an arc that has been quite perfect for the person we have been and we are still becoming. This will continue to be true. Knowing this lessens the hold fear and confusion has on our lives. We are being guided always. We can trust this. And this is another quote on, under that that she wrote. Whatever draws our attention today is purposeful. It's part of the story unique to each one of us. How comforting that is. So I'm going to take that, those words and that advice and trust that even this annoyance that is happening for my own good and that by trusting that I am being taken care of no matter what is an act of love having faith and trust in the unfoldings of my life, even during obstacles and frustrations, is an act of me being open to love. So I just thought it was a perfect message to share with what's actually specifically happening to me and how that can relate to things that have happened to you. Like I said, if you want to see these Magic Money Message postcards, go to my website, postcardstotheuniverse.com. And if you're interested in doing inner work exercises and reading people's incredible journeys of transformation, inspiration, and manifesting, please check out my book, Postcards to the Universe, Harness the Universe's Power and Manifest Your Dreams, which you can find in your favorite bookstores online or your favorite bookstores. Okay, so next week I have Elisa Donovan on, and she's a part of an iconic pop culture. She began her film career originating the role of Amber in the iconic Paramount Pictures comedy Clueless. She followed that up with the television series Beverly Hills 90210. She then went on to reprise her role in the TV series Clueless. She's an actress. A lot of people may remember her, Elisa Donovan. So she has a new book that just came out called Wake Me When You Leave, and it was released in, on June 8th of 2021, and the book is a, her very personal memoir about losing her job, her relationship, and her father to cancer all in a very short period. And through her grief, she began to connect to her father to a series of visitations and dreams, helping her heal and, and remedy her life. So it's going to be a really fun interview next week. So please join me next Wednesday. Okay, to share a bit with you about today's guest, I'm very excited. Karen Casey, author and workshop facilitator for 12-Step Recovery, her first book, Each Day a New Beginning, has sold more than 3 million copies. A much-loved self-help author on spirituality and, and peace of mind, Karen has published 31 books, including since then, including her newest book, Each Day a Renewed Beginning, Meditations for a Peaceful Journey. Peace is always possible, even in the midst of a storm. By sharing a meditation for each day of the year, author Karen Casey speaks to the common experience, shared struggles, and unique strengths of those who seek support and spiritual growth in recovery. Featuring daily inspirational quotes about finding peace and honoring love, this positive thinking book offers the perfect touchstone. And if you want to find out more about Karen, you can go to her website, www.womens spirituality.com. That's women's with an S spirituality.com. Welcome, Karen. Thanks for being here with me today. Oh, thank you, Melissa. I enjoy being with you. Um, <laughs> and I loved your affirmation for the week. Thanks. I am open to love. Thank uh, you. I, because I really think that that uh, is, is a defining kind of affirmation um, that could serve us for every week, actually. Now, you mentioned my website, and um, mm. it's actually women's, no apostrophe, dash spirituality.com. Mm. Thank so, you for well, correcting yes. me. Women's dash yes, okay. spirit. That's <laughs> important. That's very important. Yes, it is. <laughs> right. or, they, or they won't end up at the right spot. That's true. No. And that was a nice introduction, and I appreciate it. And uh, it has Thank been uh, a long journey. Uh, I've been on this uh, this path for, uh, well, I came into Al-Anon in 74 and mm -hmm. got sober and Alcoholics Anonymous in May 24th, 1976. Wow. So okay. it's been, yes, mm -hmm. it's been a, a long commitment to living my life um, differently, di living my life from uh, a place of love and uh most of the time, joy and helpfulness, and uh, as much as possible, and 
Um, and this book, my newest book, Each Day a Renewed Beginning, mm-hmm. um, I wrote during the quarantine. Um, mm-hmm. I was I was just um, kind of um, floundering, I mm-hmm. would say. Uh, my husband and I were in Naples, where we live uh, for uh, much of the year, mm-hmm. and I was... Um, and we didn't return to Minnesota for the summer months like we usually do because mm-hmm. we couldn't um, leave Florida. Right. Uh, the pandemic was going to be too dangerous. I have a lung disease, and the pandemic oh, was going to be too dangerous, mm-hmm. the doctor said. Sure. So we just course. stayed put. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we're all drawn to write, I think, um, whenever we are called to it. And I had um, not very long before finished another book, 20 Things I Know for Sure. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was just, as I said, kind of floundering, um, trying to sort out who I was and what was happening in the midst of the quarantine. And I, I kind of defined that kind of floundering as God's way of calling me to Mm -hmm. sit and just be open, be open Hmm. to the love of the presence of God. And that's Hmm. really how this book came about. Um, My search for peace, my -hmm. search, my personal search for peace is what became um, this particular book. And yeah, it it pleases me so much um, that that's how God has actually reached out to me all all over all of these years. All right, of over all your books. Well, you know, when I woke up this morning and I found out what happened and I knew, you know, we had our show planned and I have some notes about, you know, what I'm going to talk about obviously already, but as I was rereading and going through your book and I saw everything that happens is for my good, right? You know when you're going through yeah. something and you're like, um, I don't know yeah. if I agree with that. <laughs> Right. Right. And I I thought, you know, this is an interesting, how can I work this into Mm -hmm. this affirmation? And it clicked in my mind as I was writing down some notes about, it's about having trust and faith, not saying that everything that's happening is good. You're not saying that. You're saying that everything that happens is for my good, meaning there's something behind it that's it's teaching us something. It's a teachable moment. There's a reason for it. And I thought, you know, trusting that is also showing love for myself and is me being open right. to love, love beyond just my personal love. You know, it's not a it's not love in a subjective way. It's love in an objective way. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Okay. That makes perfect sense. You know, I, I, as I look on the lifeline of my life or the timeline mm-hmm. of my life, mm-hmm. you know, there were lots of things that in the midst of the experience, I mm-hmm. certainly would not have said, been able to say, sure. this is good. Right. But, the, you know, the fortunate thing for all of us is that we're mm-hmm. able very quickly to then look back on what just happened or what happened last year or 15 mm-hmm. years ago and sure. see how, um, how beautifully it wove itself into the next experience of our life. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's, you know, that's mm-hmm. how I feel like everything is ultimately for the good because everything really, um, is the precursor to what comes next. And so we're mm-hmm. always being pulled forward into mm-hmm. that better place for us mm-hmm. so that any stop along the way mm-hmm. has, its, uh, has its lesson to teach. And, you know, I, I look at life as just a collection of lessons, a collection yeah. of lessons with the very people that we need to have to share that lesson with that mm-hmm. um, that there really are not any accidental visitors on our path that mm. yeah. those those we intersect with are are 
there by design. And that gives me a real sense of well-being. Now, you know, when you look at something like um, being hacked on mm-hmm. Facebook, sure. my husband and I have had our identity stolen. Mm-hmm. We have had credit cards hacked so many <laughs> times. Right. And, you know, it's, it's hard in the midst of something like that to say, oh, gee, this is for my good. But you know right. how I look at that? I look at that as an opportunity to simply be patient and say, you know, do I need to make this the right. all of my life? Or can right. I just see this as a tiny little detour? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one of the times recently when um, the most recent time that our identity was actually stolen, the individual, mm-hmm. we even had his name. He was in Atlanta. We oh had a gosh. list of all he had bought on wow. our Costco credit card. He had spent nearly a hundred thousand dollars. Now we didn't have to pay it of course. Why of course. But you right. know, I kept thinking, um, that individual hopefully has mm-hmm. needed to use those things for people in his life who have less than me. Mm, and you know, I think there's always you know, there's always a way to put a different face on something. Yeah, you, know? you are, you are right. You are a hundred percent right. There is always a way. And you're right. Like in the scheme of life, like I even said that to myself, really with people suffering and what's happening in other parts of the world right now. And right. with this pandemic, is this really, are you really going to make this a big thing? You're so what your Facebook got hacked. It is what it is. And I'm not right. going to make it a thing, but um, I want to take our pause here because I want to delve into the manifestations in your book when we come back. So you guys okay. who are listening, stay tuned. And if you just give us a couple minutes, I will be back with Karen Casey. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi, I'm Melissa Caprio from Postcards to the Universe, creating the life you crave. Do you believe in magic? What if I told you all you had to do was get a little creative and work a dream spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Well, guess what? I've got the spell for you. Postcards to the Universe, a global movement for manifestation, is a casting magical tool for you to use whenever you want. How does living in passion sound to you? Join me in my movement where you get to create in the magical playground. Let's think outside the box and do some playful conjuring. By casting out our desires with a manifesting postcard, we explore our hearts and allow the alchemy of our dreams to appear. And don't forget to tune in each week here on Ohm Times Radio with my show, Postcards to the Universe, Creating the Life You Crave at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I share tips on creativity, abundance, and prosperity, and you will be introduced to the coolest guests, trailblazers, mystics, and creatives who enrich our lives. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. The rainbow is God's promise of hope for you and me. And though the clouds hang heavy and the sun we cannot see, we know above the dark clouds that fill the stormy sky, hope's rainbow will come shining through when the clouds have drifted by. Teresa Caprio is the president and founder of Rainbow Guardian Inc., a nonprofit 501c3 serving the intellectually challenged slash developmentally disabled, including autism. 
Teresa started the foundation in 1995 so she could help make a better life for her intellectually challenged daughter. Her dream is that the Rainbow Guardian will provide the necessary tools and education to help the public understand the special needs population because it's often discarded in mainstream society. To find out more or make a donation and support, please go to www.rainbowguardian.org. Rainbow Guardian's special mission is to see these unique people live a happy, full life and have a future of liberty and equality. Welcome back. I have author Karen Casey on, to, on with me today in her new book, which came out in May of 2021, Each Day a Renewed Beginning Meditations for a Peaceful Journey. And I love that. So I'm going to just jump right in. So we have some heavy stuff happening in the world right now, right? <clears throat> so Yes, we do. How do we go along in this world being peaceful? Well, that's such a great question, and believe me, it's one that I've thought about a great deal. And um, along with my um, pathways in Al-Anon and Alcoholics Anonymous, I have been a student of A Course in Miracles for uh, more than 30 years. And I don't know how many of your listeners are familiar with A Course in Miracles or whether you're familiar with A Course in Miracles. I am familiar um, with it. Yes, I'm very familiar with A Course in Miracles, and I'm, I know okay. a lot of my listeners are also. So go ahead. Okay. And I actually well, had a question I'm, about it, so it's perfect that you brought this up. Go okay. Ahead. Yeah. Okay. Well, at any rate, because of being uh, a student of A Course, mm -hmm. I, I really feel as though we can rise above the battleground of the chaos. You know, I okay. really think of this world – this classroom mm -hmm. that we're mm -hmm. living in as simply that. It's a classroom that is peopled by 8 billion egos and 8 billion egos who are mm -hmm. often at odds with each other. True. And, I, um, and I think that when we look at the chaos all around, we see evidence of that. We see mm -hmm. evidence of that every time we turn on the television or turn on mm -hmm. the radio. We sure. hear about the egos that are just intent on mm -hmm. um, destroying the lives of one another. And that same ego is just as prevalent in our own minds unless mm -hmm. we choose to listen to the quieter voice of our higher power or the Holy Spirit instead mm -hmm. of the ego. And so I, I really think that um, when we look at the chaos around us, it behooves each one of us to simply immediately be an expression of love wherever we are and to seek to see mm -hmm. a spirit as, as the eternal presence in, in all of those crazy egos, <laughs> to not mm -hmm. focus on the egos that are just uh, causing havoc, and, and uh, havoc mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. not... I mean, that's too light a word, causing right. murder and destruction right. wherever they go. Mm -hmm. But to know that within um, those same minds, their mm -hmm. uh, spirit is very present. And to know that the best thing I can do is to simply be an expression of love to spirit everywhere. You know, I've got a very good friend. I teach the course um, mm -hmm. on Zoom um, to a, a group of people that I've been mm. that I've been involved with for many many years, and wow, and there's nice. a well, there's one of the members in our group that talks all the time about raising the vibrational level of the universe, mm -hmm. and and we do that we can do that by simply asking ourselves the question again and again, how can I see this differently, mm -hmm. and to focus in the midst of that question, to focus on being that expression of love rather than acting from a place of fear, because that's what the egos that are causing uh -huh. destruction all over, they're acting from their own place of fear. 
They're yes. living simply in the classroom. They're not mm. living from a place of love. So, you know, I think what I have learned, what, what's mm-hmm. been so helpful for me and what has been really expressed in book after book of mine, um, one of my books that I wrote three or four years ago, 52 Ways to Live a Course in Miracles, was mm. really taking principles from the course and applying them so that we could literally change our lives uh, one week at a time. You know, I mean, it really is about what can I do here? How can I respond to this situation in a loving way rather than allowing my ego to take charge? And so my newest book, Each Day a Renewed Beginning, Meditations for a Peaceful Journey, is really stressing that again and again and again. How can I look at this differently? What can I bring to this moment? How can I be helpful and loving and kind in this moment rather than letting my ego be the one who defines me and determines my actions? Mm, I love that. Yeah, because in your, in your, okay, so just, I just want to mention this about your book. So as I was going through your book, so the way her book is laid out is it starts January 1st and it ends December 31st and each day there is a meditation that you that you share a, maybe a paragraph or two about focusing on that meditation. It's very right. easy to follow. So you can start with the day that you're at or like me, which I, I was skipping around and every time I would skip around, I would turn exactly to that to meditation I needed to hear, you know, so it was perfect. So yeah, yeah, you can, you can read it. You can read it from start to finish, or you can just open it up in the middle and see what affirmation and what meditation comes for you for that day. And that's the message I believe that you need to hear or you wouldn't have opened to that page. And in one of them, you talk about that. You, you have a quote from The Course in Miracles, and it's, every loving thought is true. Everything yes. else is an appeal for healing and help, regardless of the form it takes. I mean, I read The Course a years ago, and I still every once in a while will read up on it, and it is, it is, um, it's deep. The Course in Miracles is very deep, deep work. <laughs> Right, and I, I don't it think it, I don't think when I read it years ago, I was ready for it. I, well, I don't think I can know, really comprehend it. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I don't think it's it's easy for anybody to read on their own, which mm-hmm. is why um, study groups are so valuable. I think. Sure. And uh, I started out more than thirty years ago in a study group, and then mm-hmm. uh, the teacher of that study group. Uh, was no longer able to do it. And so then I started leading a study Mm -hmm. group. And so I've just continued to do that. And we, um, in fact, do it on Zoom now because of Mm -hmm. the quarantine. Sure, of course. But, you know, I I really feel like um, the the concept, every loving thought is true, is directly related to, you know, God, the... you know, God gave us the Holy Spirit when, mm-hmm. when supposedly, according to the course, you know, mm-hmm. egos decided that, that we could, as egos, do this world better than God was doing it. And mm-hmm. so according to the course, you know, we just simply thumbed our nose and said, we're out of here. We're going to do it ourselves better. Well, and then this classroom is what we've created, this classroom mm-hmm. of war and conflict and right. poverty and everything else. And so, but so God says, well, I will make sure that you can always choose to be loving in spite mm-hmm. of what the ego is trying to push you to do. And, mm-hmm. and I will make sure the Holy Spirit is constantly offering you a loving thought because that's the true thought, a loving thought. And, you know, the thing I love about the Course is, that when you really look at it from, um, from a practical standpoint, it offers so many simple suggestions. And that very one, every loving thought is true, everything else is an appeal for healing and health, regardless of the form it takes, is one of those absolutely simple equations. It's like we all can tell the minute somebody says something to us, if it's loving, 
or right, right. if it's angry and hurtful or critical. And if we can remember in that moment that this person being critical mm-hmm. and angry and, and mm-hmm. hurtful is actually coming from a place of fear. And the Course would say, when people are coming from a place of fear, this is your perfect opportunity to come yourself from a place of love. And, you know, that's really what this book, Each Day a Renewed Beginning, tries to stress in one way or another. You know, if we will find peace on our own journey, every time we are willing to be loving and kind to others, it is truly as simple as that. Every kindness we offer somebody else really brings uh, a, um, a comforting balm to our own lives. So if I want a peaceful life, guess what? I have to treat others peacefully. You know, I can't go yes. around banging on my horn in the car or pushing my grocery cart against somebody or snarling at my husband or any of those things if I want to be peaceful. You know, (laughs) uh, I'm so often reminded of what Mother Teresa said, be kind to everyone and start with the person standing next to you. She didn't say, you know, be kind to the person who's been kind to you. No, No. (laughs) it's, it's, it's like be kind to absolutely everyone and 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 that just simplifies life you know be peaceful Mm. treat people peacefully if you want to feel peaceful yourself treat treat people lovingly if you want to feel loved because as you said early on we really have to learn how to love ourselves and we really i don't know about you or our readers but boy when i've gone around acting in a really ugly way toward others, I mm-hmm. surely do not love myself in that moment. No, no, you don't love yourself in that moment. And it is so true. And I do want to mention this about the Course. The Course in Miracles, because we're using the words ta- God and the Holy Spirit, because that's the way it's described in the Course, but it isn't a religious text. No. You don't right. have to be Christian or Catholic right. or, or, or you can be any, you can come from any religious background or you can come from no religious background. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's just that is the wording that it was given to the person who wrote it was it, it was downloaded Helen. to that person. Uh, okay, right. I forgot her name. Yes, as God and... Helen Shookman. Right. Okay, Helen as as God, yeah. right, as God and the Holy Spirit. So it's not religion. And the whole thing is everything that comes from love, basically, in a nutshell, everything that comes from love is true. And anything that is not loving is false. Basically, right. that's it. Exactly. Right. right. And, you know, and I, that's I, hard I'm to put into practice, of course. But yeah. Right. right. Go I'm ahead. so glad you made that point because I mm-hmm. think that a lot of times when people hear A Course in Miracles, hear mm-hmm. that title, they go, oh, yeah, yeah, what does all right. that mean? And I, so I'm glad you made a point of that. It's not a religious program, um, even though it makes reference to the Holy Spirit. But it really, it, that reference mm-hmm. is really to that kind, loving voice mm-hmm. in our minds. The Course um, says in so many ways, too, we do have two voices in our mind. Mm. We all recognize the voice of the ego because it's always telling us to do something pushy or oh. ugly or snarly or argumentative. Oh. And that other voice is saying, hey, let's look at this differently. You know, let's mm. try a different approach. Let's come from a place of love instead. And right. um, so, you know, it has. It has certainly had an incredible influence on my life. And, mm-hmm. and the, one of the things that I love about it, too, is that it blends so beautifully with the 12 steps. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they have been core to my life. You mean life. the 12 steps in recovery? The, the and 12 recovery AA steps. And yeah. Al-Anon okay. and, okay. and the okay. other 12-step program, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. It blends so beautifully with those um, those that playbook for living, you know, Mm. they all three blend together so well. You know, I wrote a book back in 1995, a daily meditation book 
uh, mm-hmm. for the Course in Miracles, too, called Daily Meditations for Practicing the Course. Wow. So if wow. any of the listeners have an interest mm-hmm. in knowing more about the Course, um, it's, it really takes Course principles, as does 52 Ways to Live a Course, takes those principles that maybe as you pick up the actual text and mm-hmm. you think, holy crap, <laughs> I, mm-hmm. this book is too dense for me. Mm-hmm. Those, those two books that I wrote uh, might be um, helpful. I right. Mean, it might be a good might, way to... They are helpful. Uh, they yeah. are helpful to start maybe with books like yours where it breaks it right. down a little bit easier before you... Because the course book is... is Well, in your in this book, your Each Day a Renewed Beginning, this book specifically... Your meditations follow along the lines of what is a lot is in the course. I noticed a lot. Yes, which is really great. And it's very easy to, the way you write it (laughs) compared to the course is very easy to understand. Yeah. Well, thank Mm -hmm. you for saying that, Melissa, because, you know, I really think that uh, to be helpful to others, we Mm -hmm. need to, um, we need to write in the way that's helpful to ourselves. And I have never, ever figured that I was the sole communicator in any book sure. I wrote. Sure. That it felt as though I was always listening to this uh, wiser voice within my mind. And, mm-hmm. um, and you know, yeah. it, it's kind of interesting. You can see that. Of, you can, you can well, see and, that and when we, you follow along in each section and each chapter. Yeah, which yeah. I really, really, really um, um, appreciated as I was reading through it because nowadays, you know, we need we need um, support, and the way you wrote it, it's very easy. Um, you feel supported. It's very easy. It talks to. I think anybody can relate to it. And I want to hold that thought because I just looked okay. at my clock and see that we got to take our next break. So before okay. I ask you a next set of questions, stay tuned, guys. We'll okay. be right back. The Real Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga, and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Satvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. Hi. I'm Melissa Caprio from Postcards to the Universe, creating the life you crave. Do you believe in magic? What if I told you all you had to do was get a little creative and work a dream spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Well, guess what? I've got the spell for you. Postcards to the Universe, a global movement for manifestation, is a casting magical tool for you to use whenever you want. How does living in passion sound to you? Join me in my movement where you get to create in the magical playground. Let's think outside the box and do some playful conjuring. By casting out our desires with a manifesting postcard, we explore our hearts and allow the alchemy of our dreams to appear. And don't forget to tune in each week here on Ohm Times Radio with my show, Postcards to the Universe, Creating the Life You Crave at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I share tips on creativity, abundance, and prosperity, and you will be introduced to the coolest guests, trailblazers, mystics, and creatives who enrich our lives. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. 
Join a virtual book club. Set up group text chats or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. Welcome back. So, Karen, you said, um, uh, and I, I quoted this, you said, writing has always been how I best communicated with God, regardless of the kind of book I was called to write. But in the most recent endeavor, being called to write specifically about the peaceful journey, how to cultivate it and then maintain it, has kept me in a place of quiet gratitude and daily well-being. And that's what I needed more than anything else. And you said you wrote this during the, the this past year, during the pandemic so quarantine, how long did it right. quarantine how long did it take you to write this book did you write every I day did. like is that your practice yes. you get it yeah okay I wrote every day um mm -hmm. it took me probably about seven six or seven months to actually mm -hmm. write the book mm -hmm. um and I started uh as I said I hadn't really planned to start another book right away because 20 things you I know for sure had just not came out, out for right. very long. <laughs> right, right. Right. It had just come out. Um, but then the pandemic hit, mm -hmm. and um, and pretty soon we were quarantined, no matter who we were and where we were. Mm -hmm. And um, and actually, um, I, I don't want to say I ended up being fond of the quarantine, except I didn't find it. Because mm -hmm. all of the AA and Al-Anon meetings went on Zoom right away, mm -hmm. and you because my, my course mm -hmm. group went on Zoom, mm -hmm. I continued to have contact yes, with I uh, that. multiple groups, you know, all the time. But, yeah, um, I get that. But, but still, I needed, I needed something. Something felt lacking. And so I started writing uh, Facebook posts every day. And I've always mm. written Facebook posts on and off. But mm -hmm. at that point, I started writing Facebook posts every day. And I probably had written a post every day for maybe more than more than two months, I'm sure. And then I thought, yeah. it was mm -hmm. like, you know what I need? I need, I need to, I just felt drawn. And, mm -hmm. you know, God, I mean, my belief in a higher power has simply always shown up in the practice of writing for me. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was in graduate school, I was the, uh, I went, I got a PhD from the University of Minnesota. And um, I was the only person I knew in my whole crowd that always looked forward to sitting down and writing uh, mm -hmm. the papers that we had to write. You know, everybody was like, oh God, another paper. And I would, I always <laughs> felt, I always felt kind of, joy yeah. because for me to sit down it felt as though I had this companion yeah. who really was present and I understand um, that yeah I bet you do you know I it doesn't happen for everybody Melissa you know yeah. lots of great writers struggle with writer's block and that just isn't something that ever happened for me and so um uh, and, you know, when I wrote Each Day a New Beginning, the, my first book, that was mm -hmm. really my search to find connection with God. Mm -hmm. And so from that moment on, it real, I realized that, that writing was the connection, that God was very present to me, that voice was ever present mm -hmm. in my mind, uh, mm -hmm. comforting me as I would sit and write. So mm -hmm. I, I've always I kind that. of felt that. I was never mm -hmm. the sole author. You know, people would think I was a crackpot if I, if they said Karen Casey and God <laughs> as the author of the book. Well, you definitely have a lot of books under your belt, so you are always <laughs> writing, which is amazing. No, it's you. I look at. I mean, my I'm a visual artist first, so photography is my first love. So I'm like that when I'm photographing, especially when I'm photographing the postcards, the manifesting postcards. I get very much into that 
that, and I feel a connection. I'm connected to source. It's a connection. You I plugged did. in yes. mm-hmm. and you plugged into source, which is, and writing Absolutely. is something that's newer to me. I came out with my book in the end of 2019 and I'm almost finished with my second book, which also Great. has photographs in it, like my first book, of course. So yeah, I've got to get on that book proposal and send that over to, to Mango. <laughs> working on that now (laughs) right but so but I do I think the way you're talking about writing is you're totally tapped into your creativity and you're tapped into source so it doesn't surprise me with your background of course in miracles and Al-Anon and your higher power that you guys you're working together that makes total sense that's right it it has been it has been uh definitely uh an effort that has that has been me and God, not me alone. You know, I, um, and that, that is just so comforting to know Mm -hmm. that that's Mm -hmm. how it works. You know, that that's that's how my life works. Because it it feels like, yeah, that that's, that's really, uh, how, how God was really trying to say, okay, Karen, your life has been kind of a struggle. Uh, Mm -hmm. you've had lots of struggles from the time you took that first drink at age 13 but wow. I'm here to yeah. help. And, wow. you know, one of the yeah. things that I have thought on and off for such a long mm. time, and I was just sitting today writing um, mm. the a new preface for Each Day a New Beginning, my first mm. book, because mm. it is, it, it's been out now for 40 years. It's 40 wow. year anniversary, which wow. is just quite an unbelievable yeah, uh, it really is. To, that to is. That is that it's been out for 40 mm-hmm. years. And so, but as I was writing um, the preface for that book, mm-hmm. it was like, you know, um, every struggle I've had along the way, mm-hmm. uh, I was never alone. I only thought I was. And I've mm-hmm. decided that God doesn't need us to know he's there for mm-hmm. him to be there. For and that just there. gives yeah. me... Yeah, that gives me such comfort. And um, so when we talk about God as the source, there is that mm-hmm. loving source that's always present to us. And, right. You know, and whatever and anybody really feels, anyplace. right, and whatever anybody listening feels comfortable calling source, that's fine. It doesn't that's matter if right. you call it God or not. You can call it Mother Nature. You can call it the universe. Right. You can call it Buddha. You can call it higher self. You got contact. You know, connect with your angels. What, whatever your whoever's uh, right. listening feels comfortable with, to right. me is I think it's all the same. But I do want to just mention a couple that you write in your book because there's one that um, I think we should touch on, and then the, my favorite one I'll say after. But the one I think we should touch on is I will always get the experiences I need, whether I want them or not. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> that, you know, a lot of people will read that and go, I don't, I don't like that one. <laughs> you know? Right. I, that's so, true. But you know, so, I really think, yeah, mm-hmm. go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I want you. You're the, you wrote it. So I yeah. want your thoughts on it. So go ahead. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. you know, I always, I, I believe firmly that there is this trajectory of our lives mm-hmm. and we all have a destination that we're heading to and we detour. Many times along the way, I, I certainly mm. in my 82 years, I turned 82 mm. this summer. In my 82 mm. years, I've had a heck of a lot of detours along the way. Mm-hmm. But I think all of those detours were actually important um, way stations for me. Mm. And so I, I really think we end up getting introduced to uh, every experience we need to have for us mm-hmm. to become who we are really meant to be in this life so that we can be all we are meant to be for all of the others we encounter in this life. You know, like I said, there mm-hmm. aren't any accidental visitors right. on our journey. I, right. I really believe, you know, I read Carolyn Mace's book, Sacred Contracts. Me too. Many, I many love years her. Ago. I it's love a her. great book. Mm-hmm. I do mm-hmm. too. And um, I can remember when I first um, heard a friend the of idea. mine had mentioned. Yes, yeah. a friend of, of mine had mentioned 
that idea to me and I initially before I read the book and I thought, no, 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 I don't yeah. think I can buy that. Yeah, and, I know. Um, <laughs> I know exactly the feeling. The, yes. <laughs> yeah. But then the long, the more I began to mm-hmm. mature in recovery and mm-hmm. heard her speak and really read the book myself, yeah. I thought, you know, every single person that mm-hmm. I met really was what I choose to call a learning partner. We mm-hmm. made, uh, I can't explain how we made mm-hmm. that decision as soul, but we mm-hmm. made a decision to help each other learn whatever we needed to learn here in mm-hmm. this existence. Yes, I know, you know exactly. That, yeah, that because it just hurts me. It comforted me too, and and truthfully, it, most of the way she's 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 talking about it is the contracts that are painful mostly. Like we we right. made a decision to go along with somebody. So if 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 I need to work on forgiveness, let's say that was part of my contract, somebody's going to show up for me in the most loving way on the soul plane, and is going to betray me on earth so I can learn how to forgive. And they're doing it, and it's actually a loving action. It's not the way our ego perceives it here in our human body. It's very hard right. to, to I grasp, know. but, but it, I, it did give me a lot of comfort, too. I think as I matured, yeah. I understood it better also, like you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I had been, um, as about a 10- or 11-year-old, the victim of sexual abuse. Mm. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the that was one of the contracts mm-hmm. that was I know. that was most difficult for me at one point. Sure. And then sure. I thought, and then as I worked through that, mm-hmm. it's what taught me about forgiveness. And so mm-hmm. exactly what you just said is what mm-hmm. happened for me. So it turned out to be a loving experience because of my mm-hmm. being able to forgive in a way that uh, on, on the earthly plane, a, a way mm-hmm. to forgive that I would never yeah. have right. been able to. Right. So, you know, everything has its place and its everything time its in our yeah. lives. Yeah. And I think that when we can begin to wrap our minds around that, mm-hmm. it, it allows us to... Um, to just move more comfortably, comfortably forward, knowing mm-hmm. that the same will be true as as time goes on. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just, no, I mean, the way you, yeah. Yeah, it's perfect the way you're just describing it. And I just have to say that my favorite one, I have to say it before, because yeah. I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, no way, we only have a few minutes. My favorite one was by comedian Bill Murray, the the, oh, the, yeah. the meditation it just doesn't matter right but just you know, in the scheme of things all of this just doesn't matter and right. and if you think of that as a soul living an eternity going through different lessons you know and different bodies or what however you want to think of it he's right it just doesn't matter <laughs> right <laughs> I, I i i'm so glad you chose that because you know i had I had um, seen a, a story about him mm. where he had begun showing up kind of it, it, <laughs> in people's lives at their parties and stuff. You know, he would just <laughs> read about something and he would show up at a surprise oh birthday my God. party. And people I love thought, it. my God, Bill Murray is here. And, you know, I mean, it, it was such an interesting view of a truly interesting man. And then the more I read about it, you know, I, I had always found uh, his movies and his, mm-hmm. his um, act Comedy. on SNL mm-hmm. a long time ago yeah. of, of such interest. But I love that. It just doesn't matter. And if we can simply apply that, you know, it's like in the big mm-hmm. scheme of things, something mm-hmm. that is happening right now that maybe feels mm-hmm. awful, to, mm-hmm. to just shrug our shoulders and say, you know, it just doesn't matter. It's all going to be okay. Everything mm-hmm. ultimately is going to be okay mm-hmm. because everything is happening as it should. Mm-hmm. So I don't need to get, I don't need to get all upset about whatever it is. And, and, you know, 
one of I, I mentioned earlier, um, you know, I have been diagnosed with this lung disease mm-hmm. um, about a year and a half ago, and that's really why we ended up not leaving Florida because the doctor mm-hmm. said to me, sure. you know, you can't if you get COVID, you yeah, you might no. not survive yeah. it, right, and so. Right. Um, uh, so, you know, you, you learn how to live with an incurable but non-contagious disease. You figure mm-hmm. at least it's not contagious. Right. And then just a month ago, my husband is diagnosed with stage 3C melanoma. Mm. And, and so uh, sorry. It's, it, yes, it is. And it's in his lymph nodes, and we don't know how far it is spread. But, you know, it is helpful for us both to look at it and say, you know, it just doesn't matter. Whatever mm-hmm. it is, we will deal with it. We don't have to go there now. We right. don't know what, what the future is going to hold. All we mm-hmm. know we have is right now, today, mm-hmm. well, these you. moments. And, okay. you know, making the most of these moments. It's I'm telling really you, fun. it's been such a pleasure, such a pleasure having you. I have to have you back. We can keep talking because there's so much more information and wisdom that you have to share. But I can see that I have like 30 seconds left. Oh, <laughs> so I okay. just want to thank you, Karen, for being here with me today. And for you guys listening, oh, you're please. you so welcome. I love it. Oh, me too. Uh, please check out Karen Casey on womens-spirituality.com. So thank you guys for listening to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, Creating the Life You Crave. And I'm wishing everyone a wonderful week filled with joy, abundance, and love. Peace. <laughs>